Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by... Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Oops, here we go again, those two fellas. Now here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac. Bob Hope. I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, the mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make Chesterfield mildness test. You know, open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are mild. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. By Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. Dublin, Ireland, a city born of invasion, bred on rebellion, matured in violence. But the world changes and Ireland with it. And today, Dublin Airport is a regular stopover for the transatlantic planes from England. Terror's halls have crumbled, the Normans are forgotten, and the rebels gone to their destinies. But one thing still remains, violence. I hardly see the necessity of going any farther away from the main waiting room, Monsieur Boucher. You know, I'm not supposed to be separated from the guards who are traveling with me. Well, I can understand that, considering what you're carrying, and that's why I want to speak to you alone. But isn't this far enough? We're out of sight from everyone. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Hmm? Seal, metal case, handcuffed to your wrist. Highly secret papers, huh? The British government really didn't see fit to confide in me. Now, you were going to tell me about... Yes, the... yes, yes, about the plot to waylay and rob you. Yeah. Well, it's simply a matter of this. Go! <laughs> plot was mine, my stupid little messenger. And as for the clever little trick of handcuffing the container to your wrist, well, <laughs> thank you very much. Well, now, I certainly can't think why he might come down here, but we've surely looked every other place for him, and I think... What? Huh? They're down there on the floor. Danny! Danny, don't let anybody in the corridor! And get a doctor! Hurry! I've just talked with the British Security Office by Transatlantic Phone Chief. Yeah? It's been almost 48 hours and they don't have a single lead yet. Okay, Ken, I know what you're driving at. You want to get into the case yourself, right? Chief, is there any other case more important at the moment? Yeah, no. A complete set of progress reports from the British Atomic Energy Commission in the hands of somebody. And so far, nothing's been done to get them back, right? Well, apparently not. Uh, at least not with any success. And that passenger, Boucher, if that's his name, he's still missing, right, Chief? Well, he seems to have disappeared. Dublin's not an easy city to hide out in unless you've made plans ahead of time. Don't you agree? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. But... Wait a minute, Ken. I started out asking the question. Chief... I'm going to Dublin. Hmm. Well, in that case, you better use the reservation I made for you on this afternoon's plane. You... <laughs> well, I'll be... Ben, those reports are being sent to Oak Ridge. Some of the secret material in them would... Well, get them back, that's all. Not quite all. I want Boucher along with the reports. Take someone pretty cold-blooded to steal a handcuff dispatch case by cutting off the hand. <laughs> Seat 
14. Should be about... Fagon! Huh? What are you doing on this plane? Mr. X? You're going to Dublin, too? Too? You, you mean you are? Oh, no. Ah. Uh, Why do you say ah like that? Fagon, when you're happy to see me, it means you're not broke. And when you're not broke, you're usually mixed up in something crooked. Mr. Thurston, honest, I swear by the father of my now, father... Now, since you're going to Dublin, it might be the same thing I'm interested in. I knew it. I knew it the second I saw you. I knew you were going to louse up the whole act. Act? What act, Pagan? Act? Uh, well, uh, th that is what, what I mean is act. What act? I beg your pardon, if... Pagan, you two... <gasps> Zora, oh. So I'm going to have competition, huh? Competition? Yeah, yeah well, I'll, I'll see you, Zora, around uh, somewhere. Pagan, aren't you uh, going to introduce me? Well, you know how it is. I mean, uh, well... I'm uh, Ken Thurston, Miss... Uh... Uh, Dane. Zora Dane. How oh, do you do? Yeah. Well, all flying to Dublin. And uh, are you also going to the Blue Unicorn Inn, Mr. Thurston? Well, I'm... Oh, no, Zora, no. He always stays at the Shelburne. I mean, I, I guess he does. He's only a casualty acquaintance, you understand? Of course I'm going to the Blue Unicorn. Oh. After all, where else? <laughs> Maybe you'd like to change your mind and go to the Shelburne after all, huh? I'll be only too happy to carry your bag. Oh, thanks, Pagan. I imagine the blue unicorn is all right. But that's not the point, Mr. X. What I mean is... <clears throat> Look, maybe if you explained your problem, whatever it was you were scared to talk about on the plane with Zora around. Oh, what's the use? I'm a gone goose anyway. You look... <laughs> Here, against the building. Uh, it's too dark to go after them. All right, Pagon, let's have it straight. Now, fast. What about this blue unicorn? What's the setup? Well, I only heard about this deal from Uncle Ahmed, and, and he only heard accidentally. A rumor, you understand? Yeah, I know. Underworld grapevine. Go on. Well, the boy who heard it, some stolen papers were going to be sold at this highest bidder here at this blue unicorn, and, well, I was only going to investigate it and, and then tell you. You were going to make a crooked buck if you could figure some angle. What about this Zora Dane? Is that a real name? I don't know. Ever hear of a man named Boucher? Mr. Thurston, I've told you everything I know now. So why can't we act like strangers, huh? It's not even safe to be around you. Pagan, what makes you think that shot was meant for me? Well, there's nobody else here but just you and... And me? Sure. Hmm? You're a potential competitor, aren't you? Stranger. Stranger, nothing, Mr. X. From now on, I'm going to stick to you closer than you a couple of wet blankets. Welcome to the Blue Unicorn, Mr. Thurston, Mr. Zellschmidt. Hello. My name is Jensen. Now, just put your names down in the book here, and I'll have the boys show you up to your rooms. Good. Amazing the way the guests have been finding my little place. Just opened a few days ago, and there are four here already. And now you two. Mm. The Blue Unicorn has been closed for two years, you know. Belongs to a fellow here in Dublin named Kerrigan. I just leased it from him last week. Uh -huh. They told me I'd go broke with it, but I figure a good cook can always bring business to an inn. It might be a good idea to try some of your cooking right now, Mr. Jensen. We came straight from the plane. We haven't eaten. Uh, well, it's a little past the dinner hour, Mr. Thurston. Oh, but that shouldn't be any problem for a good cook. And it isn't. As a matter of fact, I served one of my specialties tonight, and there's some left over. Iris, too. No, it's a fricassee. And, gentlemen, until you've tasted Jensen's chicken fricassee, you haven't lived. All right, Mr. Jensen, let's start living. <laughs> gentlemen, two pints of stout. <laughs> Look at that head. It's brewed right here in Dublin at the south side of town. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, excellent menu, Mr. Jensen. Thank you. Maybe you'll decide to stay a month or two. Well, my plans are a little indefinite so far. Exactly what the other guests said. Did they? 
I think they're all in the public room, by the way. If you'd care to meet them, just go on in and introduce yourselves. Fine, thanks. Mm -hmm. Coming, Pagan? Oh, you bet I'm coming, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> but the character's flipping bullets at me. I'm sticking closer to you than your own mother. And here we go. Good evening. Well, more competition. I wondered what happened to you, gentlemen. It's nice of you to be concerned, Miss Dane. Well, I was hoping for the best, but... Uh... Here you are. <laughs> Disarmingly frank, isn't that the way they put it? I suppose. Let me introduce a couple of more rivals. Mr. Thurston and Mr. Zellschmidt, this is Ivan Gonoff. Ah. Uh. He is the dark, sullen type. Uh. The sleepy-looking one draped over the chair is Bertie Battersea. This is a pleasure, old boy. He's the hypocritical type. What kind are you, Mr. Thurston? Well, I'm... I'm apparently the kind who interrupts other people's dart games. Go right ahead. We'll watch. All right. Oh, there is one more, by the way. A man named Khan. He went to bed early. Well, Yvonne, old boy, it's your throw, you know. Why, uh, it is a game for children. <coughs> oh, it is the way you play it. Uh, Give him a zero, Bertie. Pleasure. Would you like to get into the game, Mr. Thurston? You mean the dart game? <laughs> oh, call it what you like. But put your name on the blackboard there. All scores are public. Yeah, I see, yeah. Ivan, 50,000. Bertie, 65,000. Zora, 75. And Khan, 100. Mr. Khan seems to be winning so far. Oh, the score keeps changing. Ivan is now waiting for a cablegram. Uh -huh. Is this in points, pounds, or dollars? Your American dollar has become standard everywhere, hasn't it? I guess so. Well, maybe a challenge is in order. A challenge? Ah, oh, this one will double anybody's highest score. That is quite a challenge. Yes, indeed. You really ought to toss a dart or two, old boy. Back it up, you know. All right. Fine. Here you are. Thanks. Now, let's see. Ah. <laughs> well, Bertie. Two bull's eyes. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, smug Americans always know everything. I didn't learn that in America, Ivan. It was in Peru, where they use poison on the darts. Miss Dane, gentlemen, something tragic has just happened. Oh? The boy found Mr. Khan in his room, dead. Huh? What? It's apparently a heart attack. A heart attack, huh? It's too late to inform the authorities until morning, but I did think you ought to know. And if you'll excuse me now. Well... One down and five to go. That leaves you with high bid, Miss Dane. I suppose you mean high score, Mr. Thurston. But aren't you forgetting your offer to double anybody else? Yes, actually, you're a high man, old boy. Care to toss another dart? No, I think I'll quit while I'm ahead. At least for tonight. Is it not a little dangerous to be ahead, Thurston? Mr. Khan, you mean? Oh, I'm pretty hard to poison. What? Poison? It's an idea, isn't it? In Peru, they use it on the darts. Here, they use it on the players. Well, I am in room 21, second floor, third door from the stairway. Good night, all. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Why do more people choose RCA Victor Television than any other make? The reason can be summed up in just one word. Quality. Million-proof quality, proven in over two million homes. RCA Victor Television is America's favorite television because, feature for feature, it's America's finest television. With RCA Victor, for example, you enjoy clear, bright, steady pictures that are locked in place by RCA Victor's exclusive eyewitness picture synchronizer. You choose your set from 14 separate models, available in a wide variety of distinctive cabinets, every one a masterpiece of superb engineering and quality craftsmanship. And remember, only when you buy RCA Victor television can you buy the RCA Victor factory service contract for expert installation and maintenance. Next chance you get... Step into your RCA Victor dealers and look over the very finest television in America today. RCA Victor Million Proof Television, proven in over two million homes. And 
now to continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. A British courier is brutally assaulted in the Dublin Air Terminal and robbed of highly secret documents. A fellow passenger named Boucher disappears at the same time, and Ken Thurston arrives at Dublin's Blue Unicorn Inn, posing as a possible buyer of the documents in competition with four international criminals. A half hour ago, one of the four was found dead in his room. And now, Ken enters his own room. Who? Who, who, who is it? Oh, Mr. Thurston. Pagan, what are you doing here? Uh, what do you think? Where have you been all this time? Looking at a dead man. That fellow Khan? Well, did you find out what killed him? Sure. Heart failure. Oh, well, then. Brought on by a dose of poison. <gasps> Mr. X, I'm leaving right this minute. Well, down that dark alley out there? Oh, you're a brave man, Pagan. And if anything happens to you... It... Never mind, never mind. I'm staying right here in this room. Who is Boucher? That's the important question. Hey, maybe it's that Ivan character. And maybe it's any one of them, including Jensen. Oh, no, Mr. Thurston. He's too good a cook to be a crook. That specialty dish? No, I managed to look at the kitchen. Jensen's chicken fricassee comes in a can. Oh, but then, well, that means he's the one. No, it just means he's lying, but he is a possibility. They all are. And they all know the authorities will move in on Khan's death tomorrow, so the heat's on. Oh, then I'm staying right here, Mr. Thurston. You're not going to catch me off down the hall somewhere in the room all alone. This is the hottest spot in the hotel, Pagan. But what are you worrying about? I'm the one who's offered the highest bid. <laughs> so the whole gang will be out rid of... Good night, Pagan. <laughs> Hold it, Miss Dane, right where you are. You... You are not in bed. No, it's my night for insomnia. Yours, too? I slipped in here to make a deal with you, Mr. Thurston. Huh? Look, we have the two top bids. Why do we not pull them and then split the stuff between us? Why don't you just outbid me and take the whole thing? Because I don't have enough money. Ivan will beat us both out if we let him. His government is backing him. They will go to any lane. Who is Boucher, Miss Dane? How do I know? Maybe you are. Maybe, or you. Do I look like a man? You could be a partner to one. Who poisoned Khan? Ask Ivan. He used the same trick once in Casablanca. And your trick seems to be a knife in the sleeve. Uh, Give it to me. Stop it. Stop. You're hurting my arm. Uh, out to eliminate competition, huh? I, I always carry it for self-defense. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to defend yourself without it for a while. Good night, Miss Dane. Uh, no, no deal, Mr. Thurston. No deal. If you change your mind... You know where to find me. Yes, sure. <laughs> Come on in, Bertie. out of this. I swear by the... Maybe I won't get out of it. Maybe I'll be murdered right here in my bed like a dog in the dark with rain coming down. Nobody even to care if I... Oh, no. Oh, no. This is it. Yeah. I'm just as good as a dead dog. Please don't kill me. You feel his gun against your throat. Yes, sir. I... I feel it good. Well, keep feeling it. Answer me. I want to know who Thurston is. Well, he's just Mr. Thurston. That, that's all, sir. You he's... don't feel it good enough. No. Who is he? Who is he? What's he doing here? Come on, talk. All right, all right. I'll tell you, he's... No, no, I can't do it. Talk? Oh, so. Well, he's... 
is the man called X. Oh, oh forgive us. Oh, that's it. Well, that explains a lot. It does? Zellschmidt, you've never seen me before, have you? No, sir, no, sir. I, I mean, how do I know? It's too dark to tell. And see that you don't tell. Do you understand? Uh, sure. Uh, ouch. I mean, sir, yes, I understand. All sir. right. All right. I go on back to sleep. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Thurston. Miss Dane, Ivan. Good morning. See now, who's missing? Bertie and Jensen. Anne Kahn, of course, is dead. And uh, Pagan. Oh, we'll be down in a minute. Meanwhile, suppose we bring the game out into the open. Hmm? Go on. All of us are after the same thing, and one of us is going to get it. So let's talk to Boucher and settle the deal. Fine, fine. Only who is Boucher? Wait, they will not permit any deal until I hear from my... Mr. Thurston! What is it, Pagan? The Jensen guy. I went to his room like you said, and he's not there. He didn't sleep in his bed. Well, he wouldn't run out without trying to close the deal unless he... Maybe he's in the kitchen. Come on. Well, it seems we have all been tricked, Mr. Thurston. Jensen Boucher, whoever he is, has got away. Uh, doesn't seem to make sense. And yet... Maybe he was the one last night, Mr. Thurston, eh? You know, that, that made me tell about... Uh... Mm, no, 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 he's too tall. That man was short. More like Ivan here. What? And anyway, even if he did know, I think he'd make some attempt to close the deal. Perhaps it was closed. Bertie is gone too, you know. Wait a second. What's that noise? It's coming from the closet door, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. He's in the lot. Well. Who is it? Well. Let's get this gag off and find out. There. Where is he? Where is he? Just show me where he is and so help me. I'll kill him with my bare hands. Kill who? The criminal idiot who calls himself Jensen. Sir, do you realize he's kept me bound and gagged for two days, a prisoner in my own pantry? Huh? Said he wanted to lease the place. Overpowered me, tied me up. So help me if I ever get Wait a my second. Hand. Jensen's run out on all of us. Who are you? Kerrigan is the name, sir. I'm the owner of the place. Just help me out of these ropes, I'll tell you all about it. Well, gentlemen, Miss Dane, it's a nasty experience, but I feel a whole lot better now. I wish we could say the same, Mr. Carrigan. So he double-crossed you on some kind of business deal, eh? Man, he's crooked enough, all right. I should have known it the minute I laid eyes on him. I suppose you'd like us to leave as soon as possible, Mr. Carrigan, unless you plan to operate the inn yourself. Yeah, not me, Mr. Thurston. I've lost enough money on it. Closed it down for good two years ago. Hmm. By the way, Mr. Carrigan, that painting on the wall by the dartboard, an old family heirloom? Hmm, not exactly. It's been there a long time, though. What do you ask? I rather like it. About a uh, hundred dollars worth, if it is money you need. Oh. It's a nice frame, Miss Dane. Two hundred, maybe? But, all right. At least I tried. Here. Gentlemen, I call you as witnesses that I made no claims about the painting. What do you mean? I know what you thought, but you're wrong. It is not an original Utrillo. I see. Well, taken again. I guess I had better get out of the game. Wait. Uh, notice the heavy layer of dust on the frames of the other paintings in the room. It's interesting that this one is so clean. So the deal was closed, Miss Dane, Mr. Carrigan, or rather Mr. Boucher. No, no, don't move. You're talking like a fool. You found out who I am from Pagan last night, so he had your partner Jensen run out to throw me off. Then you closed the deal with Miss Dane. Delivery was just made. The papers are hidden somewhere in the back of that painting. Hold it, Ivan. Stay where you are. You're making a big mistake, Thurston. My name is Carrigan. Is it? Look, if you've been locked up for, for two days, how do your shoes get wet from last night's rain, Boucher? You know that? 
that's really a very good question, old man. Oh, Bertie, come on in. Watch him, Mr. Thurston. He's got a gun. Yeah, I know. But aren't you going to do something? Shoot him or something? And have the British Secret Service lose one of their best men? Secret what Service. Is... Thanks. Well, we picked up that Jensen individual, Mr. Thurston, about three streets away. Good. My chaps are searching Yvonne's room at the moment. Matter of poison, you know. You need that cablegram. Well, Mr. Thurston, it looks as though you have the high score. Pick up the <laughs> marbles. Thanks. There's a lot more involved, though, than that. It's the same old story and the same old game. Anything for a crooked buck. It's being played all over the world, too. With no umpire, no rules. By people who aren't worth their powder to... Well, we've just got to keep on winning, that's all. We've got to keep on winning. Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. If you suffer from the pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you have received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your own physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Those you heard in tonight's cast were Joan Banks, Will Wright, Olan Soleil, Frank Gustel, Dan O'Hurley, and Tony Barrett. Next week, India, where international intrigue, high treason, and a few acres of seeming wasteland may provide an answer to peace in our time. Disturbing the peace, of course, will be Leon Velasco with Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X is a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Tomorrow, enjoy Tallulah's Big Show. Now it's your hit parade on NBC. NBC.